Morning. Morning. Again. I'll do my best not to run you guys all over the Bible this morning. Uh, there'll be several places at least we reference. I don't know how many of them we'll turn to, but we'll reference several anywho. But one, I'm glad to be back this morning. Glad to be back home. Even though I wasn't gone all week, just a little bit of it. Um, had some pretty interesting drives on the way down to uh, to class. Uh, the, the three mornings that I was driving, and there was uh, one little spot that it, it wasn't. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, for about ten or fifteen mile stretch that was there. Um, there was a radio station that would bleed over on the the one that I was listening to, and it was annoying at first. I didn't much care for it. Uh, because uh, it takes me forever once you go to figure out, um, I was trying to figure out Nashville's Air One station, listen to that. Uh, but anyways, as you kind of get off of uh, 40 onto 109 from about uh, right there, um, almost there to that big fancy new bridge, I would get bleed over another radio station. Like I said, it was somewhat annoying, but... Uh, as I got to listening to it, like you know, through the, the the crackle and the squelch and whatnot, I could figure out that it was uh, it, it was uh, it was a preacher, and man, he was wearing it out and he was hammered down. So then you kind of really be adjusting, it, and then I was trying to figure out what station that was, and I never could find it. And it would only bleed over for just that little bit of span right there, but uh, it got to the point that, uh, you know, like I said, first morning really annoyed me. The second time I drove down, I was specifically trying to find it, and then the last morning, I drove a little slower going through there so I could catch a little bit more of it. Uh, but it was one guy, uh, it was one guy preaching it was his sermon. He'd done a phenomenal job and really um, had opened my eyes to some things and got me uh, back into studying this. We'll look at some of it this morning. Um, that uh, um, I was privileged to hearing, not, not really that uh, what he had entirely, but we'll look at some of it. And on the flip side of all that, man, it's been nice this week, ain't it? Hallelujah. It's like spring this week. I think you're giving snow next weekend, but we'll enjoy the 80s while we got it, the upper 70s. Beautiful outside. Um, put rocks in your pockets when you go outside. You guys might blow away out there. It's a uh, uh, winds whizzing around the corner of the building. But uh, yesterday, as we've been going all week, uh, we got a lot done. Got a lot done around the house. Uh, we we pretty much got up and started getting with it before eight o'clock, and we wore it out about all day. Um, even got uh, overly excited with the warm weather and. Uh, Went in, hooked the tiller box up on the tractor and tilled up my garden. Uh, the spot there that we was going to put it made it a little bit bigger because uh, if you guys went to the grocery store lately, you know you have to take out a second mortgage just to go there. But we got out, we was working and uh, talked about it. Um, we're going to plant a lot more than what we typically plant and um, undertaking that. Uh, we had this long talk that, you know, we're going to have to really stay on top of it and keep the weeds out and, you know, really do a good job. And there's a lot that goes into gardening. There really is. There's the prep work. There's planning on that. You got to figure out where you're going to put it. Um, not only you got to figure out where you're going to put it based on what you're going to put in it, because some stuff may not need as much sun, direct sun, uh, may get too much water, not enough water. A lot of stuff that goes into it uh, that, that can be overwhelming. It really can be overwhelming in thinking of all the parts that, that goes into gardening. Uh, and I will ramble about that for just a few more moments uh, on the garden because I need you to get your mindset wrapped around a garden this morning, whether it's a vegetable garden, whether it's your flower garden. Um, it's not just... Uh, I, I personally would like uh, to, you know, you just throw your seeds out and come back at some point and poof, there it is, and pick it, eat it, whatever it may be. I would love that. Uh, that would be great. Each spring, we usually um, get a bunch of flowers and we'll plant in the front flower beds and we'll, we'll, it'll look pretty. Um, and if you guys come about the first two weeks after we do that, it'll be gorgeous. After that, it's going to be mostly weeds. Uh, we apologize, but we kind of get lazy. Um, and I tell Mandy all the time, I'm not planting the stuff if you ain't going to water it because when you get about mid-July and half the stuff's probably dried up and dead anywho. Um, but there's a lot goes into it. You, it's not just a, a one and done. You can't just uh, uh, plant a garden 
and then uh, once a week come to it and try to tend to it uh, and try to catch everything up uh, you know on sometime during the weekend whether it be Saturday or Sunday or uh, whatever day it may be it, it's not going to work that way you're going to get so far behind on everything that needs to be done in the garden once you get like one or two weeds in there before you know it they're going to take over they're going to choke everything down especially when the stuff is young when it's tender when it's starting to sprout and uh, uh, you, you really want it to be in there um, when it comes to fertilizing you don't want to fertilize too early. You don't want to get the fertilizer too close to the young stuff. That fertilizer will burn it up. Uh, you, it, there's a lot that goes into gardening and it's so important that you and I can understand gardening this morning because that's all we're going to talk about is your garden. I want you to open your Bibles with me to Genesis and we're going to be in chapter number two. And we're going to read just a little bit here, and we're going to have to do some skipping and some jumping through this, so uh, I'll do my best to tell you when that's going to happen. Otherwise, just try to find it. Uh, if you can't keep up with me reading along, just listen. That'll be sufficient. Genesis chapter number 2, begin reading verse number 8, right underneath the heading where it says Garden of Eden. Genesis 2, 8, the Bible says this, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and went thence and was parted and became into four heads. Skip down with me to 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you again here this morning, God, again, we're thankful, Lord, to be in your house. Father, thankful for the opportunity uh, to be here, to be able to read your word, to hear, uh, to hear of it, Lord, just to learn of you and to study. Father, Lord, just to be in your presence, God, we're thankful for that this day. Uh, Father, we just uh, ask you, Lord, that you just fill this house, Lord, again, with your presence, Lord, your spirit, uh, uh, that you would be here, be a, 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 a ever a huge part of our services here this morning, Lord, that you just speak into our hearts, Lord, that you would, uh, uh, Father, Lord, just have your way with us here this morning, help us to to see, hear, and understand, Lord, uh, all the aspects, Lord, of, uh, of, our, of our lives, Father, and the things that you desire us to, uh, to see, hear, and to do. Father, we just ask you that you'd help us to be obedient, Father, to any prompting of the Spirit, Lord, that we may receive here this day. Uh, God, that we would just uh, uh, be pleasing unto you, Father, that uh, we would worship you in a manner that is, uh, uh, is truly spiritual and in a truthful way. Father, we just ask you, Lord, that uh, uh, of every person that is sitting here uh, this morning, God, that you would speak to us, Father, speak to us, Lord, based upon all the things that's going on in our lives. Father, give us the comfort. Uh, Father, give us the assurance. Father, give us the uh, the courage, the boldness. Father, you, you know us better than we do. Father, we just ask you, Lord, that you'd stand and deliver to us here this day. Uh, Father, as, uh, as I read through this, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would help my eyes, Lord, to be able to focus on what it is that I'm trying to read. Uh, as you know, they've been bothering me this week. Father, I just ask you that you'd help me to do that. Father, Lord, just help me to speak only the things that you desire me to say here this day. God, we love you and we praise you and I ask these things in your son Christ Jesus' name. And amen. As we read this and understanding these things, we're uh, going to talk a whole lot about the, the, the job that God had given Adam to do here. And one of the main things I want you to know is God had, uh, he had planted this huge, this beautiful garden that is here. Uh, and he had given Adam the, the, the sole task to tend the garden. And that's what he said. I want you to keep it. I want you to dress it. I want you to do all the work therein. Uh, so first and foremost, in being a, a chosen by God to do the task, I want us to see here and understand that it's going to be a daily task. It's going to be something that uh, Adam was going to be doing each and every day of his life. Just as tending this garden, as you and I know, in a, a planting our, our vegetable garden, our flower garden, uh, if, it's a, if it's an orchard for fruit, whatever it may be, you know the amount of work that goes into it before you ever throw down your first seed. Amen? You know what all it is that you got to do. You know it's going to be a daily task. 
God simply said to Adam, hey, I put all this stuff here, dress it. It was not going to be a sometime event. It wasn't going to be something that Adam was going to do at his leisure or just whenever he felt uh, uh, necessary or whenever he felt that there was nothing else to do. I guess I'll go out here and tend to the garden. It was something that he had to do. It was specific to him. It was the job that was given to him, and he was the only one there to do it. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now let's think on this. God created the garden. Man did not. God did. God created the spot that he wanted the man to be. God created the area in which he was going to put Adam. And then on top of that, not only did he create it the way that he desired it to be, the place that he wanted it to be, he brought the individual that he wanted to be there to tend to the garden. God planted a garden, and he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground he made the Lord, uh, he... he and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. God planted it, and he made it beautiful. He made it look good. He made everything in there appealing to the eye. Stay with me this morning. We'll get to the point shortly. But where God sends you, there will be beauty around. No matter where it is that God desires you to go, no matter what task that He desires you to do, first and foremost, you got to know that God is sending you to the place that He has prepared for you. He sent Adam to the garden that God had prepared. He prepared it uh, for Adam. It was specific to him. That was his job. That was his task. And then he sent the individual that he chose to be in charge thereof and to give him the simple task to keep and to tend and to dress the garden. And knowing Adam had to know that that was going to be a daily task. Now, if we were to pause on this for just a moment and begin to, uh, to look and give a different application to these things, how many of you know where God has sent you? How many of you know the job that God has sent you to do? How many of you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me break this down. Let me make this easier. Let me make this easier. A lot of us may still be searching for the spiritual role that God would have us do in our life. But how many of you can simplify that down, whether you uh, a husband, a wife, a mom, an aunt, a child? How many of you know your job? You know that, hey, I am, a, I am this, I am, a, I am grandma, I am mom. Well, either way, your children is going to be a gift of God. If you don't believe me, read the Word of God. You'll find it there. There's not an accident that's going to happen. It's going to be somebody that God knew. He knew them before He formed them. That's not in no way an accident. Don't you ever let somebody tell you that a child is an accident because they are a divine gift from the Heavenly Father. You understand that first and foremost. So if you are a mama or a daddy, just as we talked about in Sunday school, God give you very explicit uh, uh, directions on what it is that He desires you to do. So if you know your job, it wouldn't be fair for me to talk to daddies because oftentimes we're the lazy ones. Mamas, how easy is it for you to be a part-time mama? I'll just be mama when it's convenient. Does that work for anybody? No, it don't, because you're responsible for another human being's life, and they require your time, your attention. It's not just like, well, it's Tuesday. Uh, I guess we'll feed them breakfast today. Yeah, no big deal. 
Well, we, that'll be fine. We won't really worry about it again until maybe Thursday or Friday. And, uh, you know, whatever. It doesn't work that way. Amen? It does not. It is something that you have to put time and effort into every single day. Just like you have to keep it, you have to dress it. The exact same instructions that God gave Adam about the garden, you've got the same thing to do with your child. You can understand that, that it's going to be a daily event. Not a sometime. Out of the ground, God made the Lord, or the out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now let's go back to Adam in the Garden of Eden. Let's think about this. There's 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 some key things in here that we can know. One, Adam is in the presence of God. He's always in the presence of God, right here. Uh, you, you can read. You, we're not going to get into this aspect of it. We're not going to study this out this morning. It's something you can do on your own time. But this is how God intended his relationship with man to be. Just as it is right here. Some key things that you can uh, uh, read and you can take from this and knowing is that when Adam got hungry, all he had to do was reach to get food. There was going to be no backbreaking labor. There was not going to be no uh, bending down and working the ground yet that come into this because God made everything to grow. Everything was beautiful. Everything was great. And everything was at arm's reach. Whatever Adam needed, he just had to reach in to get it. He was in the presence of God. God was very much in the garden. Uh, God knew the garden. He walked in the cool of the day. Adam walked in the cool of the day with God on a regular basis. I want you to understand that he was always there. Come back to now with me. Let's go back to a present modern application. Let's not look at us in our jobs and our specific duties and things that we may have, but let's just look at being in the presence of God. Knowingly or unknowingly, you, are, you and I are in the presence of God on a daily basis. We can sing the old songs in a hymn book, and he walks with me. He does. He's there. Biblically speaking, uh, the Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. We believe that. We have our faith in that. Praise God, He's not going to leave us. We, are, we can all be thankful for that. But when it comes to the tending and to the keeping of what God has put us in charge of, we look at this as just an event, something that would happen, uh, if you allow me to say it, weekly, on Sunday of the morning, maybe of the evening. If there's nothing else going on, we might even give God a bit of our time in the middle of the week. But for Adam, being in the presence of God, it was all that he knew. Now, as we read through Genesis, as we're just jumping from verse to verse and we read this through there and it's like God created the garden and Adam was there and it was just like just a few minutes that he was there. And then all of a sudden here come the woman and then the woman came and then the serpent came and then they eat of the tree they weren't supposed to and boom, they got kicked out. We read that in a manner of just a page or two and it only just took just a few minutes, right? There was a length of time that Adam was in the presence of God. That's how God intended the relationship for man to be. If you want to know what it's like, if you want to know what you should really be doing as a, as a child of God, as a, as a born-again believer, you should be tending to the garden on a daily basis. You should be uh, uh, getting up and you should be uh, going about the work that has to be done because just as you and I have already discussed, as we already know, you ain't just throwing your seeds out and hoping something grows up. Throughout the entire rest of the Bible, we're going to talk on these things. As Paul's teaching, he's talking about uh, uh, sowing and reaping. It, it comes back to the garden. It comes back to things that you and I all know. When Jesus is talking about the Word of God, he uses it in comparison as seeds in the sower. He's talking about the garden. He's bringing everything back into this moment because that's how God intended it for, to be for you and I. It's something that God wanted us to do daily. 
He desired us to be there daily. Jesus said this in the book of Luke in the ninth chapter, verse number 23. He said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Nowhere will you find that Jesus said to take up your cross on Sunday morning and come to church. He did not say that, that you could do it once a week. It was not just a weekly event. It was a daily occurrence that happened. And friend, I'm here to tell you, as the preacher, as the pastor of the church, too often is our relationship with God just an event that happens on a weekly basis and not a daily occurrence. Maybe you guys ain't never been guilty of that. Maybe you are all just heap better Christians than I am, but I might dare say you're just as guilty as I am. I told you we're going to plant a lot more this year, and uh, I wish we had decided this when Paul was still living. That way he could teach me how, and he could fuss on me as I was doing it because I guess that's how he thought I learned the best. But it never fails. When we start planting about the time stuff really starts coming in good is the week that we usually go on vacation. So it's like you dress everything up and you got it looking really good. And then about the second, third week of June when we head out of town for five to seven days and we come back, it ain't nothing but weeds everywhere. And you're so far behind it. And friend, when you've got that many weeds in there, you ain't getting them all out. They're, they're, they're just going to wind up staying. You'll get them out, some of them here and there, uh, this, that, and the other. And uh, this past year, I, I called my dad and I was like, hey, dad, we're going to be out of town. Hey, come out here and pick all you want, weeds included. Come and get whatever you want. And I was hoping that uh, I was hoping that as he was finding some squash and maters, he would find some weeds and yank some of them out too. And he, he's bound to got some of them because it wasn't as bad as it has been in years past. But you're gone for a week and then you come back and you walk down and you put your feet right at the edge of the dirt and you're thinking, man, <laughs> it's going to take all day to get these out. But that's what happens when your relationship with God is an event and not a daily occurrence. If you're out there every single day, you may not ever find a weed. You may not be finding that there is sin growing up everywhere in your life that is drowning out all the fruits that you could be producing. You won't see that. But when you just come to church once a week and you sit and you begin to hear and listen and read and all of a sudden you think there's nothing but weeds and thorns everywhere, what am I going to do? You can have a daily event with Christ. You can, you can visit Him. You can walk in the cool of the day in the midst of the garden daily. You can keep it and you can dress it and you won't, become, you won't be overgrown with everything. Jesus said, deny Himself and take up His cross daily. Go back to Adam while he's strolling around in the garden. What do you guys imagine when you think of the Garden of Eden? Every now and then I give you guys some glimpse into the randomness that my mind can create. But for whatever reason, I think it's pretty well perfectly square. Has some nice, uh, like uh, those uh, little, like round, soft stones that you would, you know, be walking on. Some big trees, the, you know, the really pretty kind. It kind of has some, like the, uh, what's that, that moss stuff that kind of hangs out of the branches. You know what I'm talking about? What is it, what is it called? We, yep, some of that. I see that kind of hanging in there. I see some like bird bass and some fountains because those are things that are pretty in my mind. And uh, it, it's all just uh, uh, kind of really neatly kept and uh, uh, it's just beautiful. And uh, uh, fruit tree, whatever, whatever kind of tree, whatever you want to pick off the tree and eat, you could. Everything's going to be there. I can see that and just imagine that it's uh, uh, just the, the beauty thereof and uh, how it kind of crisscrosses some of the, uh, the little walkways and paths and some like trees 
swings and things like that. I mean, I can, in my mind, that's the Garden of Eden. It's probably nothing like what it really was, but in my mind, that's what I see with some nice, like, floral arches as you, like, uh, come walking into it. But the thing about it is, as in my mind, as Adam is walking through the garden, God is with him. And they're having the, the daily conversation and the fellowship, and they're there with one another, and they know what's going on. Verse 15 in Genesis 2, it says, And uh, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And then skipping down to verse 19, it says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now, let's get into the amount of time that Adam would have been in the garden. How long do you think it would take him to name every creature that Noah was going to put on the ark? And then to stare at it. How in the world do you think Adam come up with zebra? Put some thought into this for just a minute. Walks up through here. Oh, what's... If we, you just talk specific about cattle for a minute, there's a lot of different kind of cows. There's a lot of different names to cows. You know, we would think of it in our mind, well, Adam just said that's cow. But you read what the Word of God says, Adam named every living creature. Those, the, the, the cattle, the beasts of the field, all those things, the fowls are there. He named every single one of them. So he is there for quite some time. And not always he have to say, all right, well, you're, you're a zebra, you're a donkey, that's an elephant, there's a lion. Oh, let me go back in here in the garden. I got to go in here and I got to go in here and work up the ground for a minute. I got to go pull some weeds. I got to do that. Adam was a busy man. And everything that he done was all about God's business because it was everything that God had told him to do. God just specifically told him, I need you to keep the garden. I need you to dress the garden. When you get your spare time, I need you to come over here and I need you to name every creature. But the verse above it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. So skipping back down, Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmeet for him. No doubt as Adam's going through this, he's probably thinking, Man, if I had one more set of hands, this would be handy. If I had somebody to sit and talk to, what, what do you reckon we should call this big thing? Really large gray body, big horn on its nose. Rhino, yeah, that's about all I can come up with. That's just what we'll go with. But the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the, the, the flesh and stood thereof. Now, I want you to pause and I want you to think on this. And this will be about as brief as we're going to touch this. Adam found Eve in his sleep. Adam found Eve in his sleep. And it's not so much that Adam found Eve. But he didn't go here, there, yonder, anywhere else. He wasn't uh, uh, out. He wasn't hitting the clubs to try to find her. He wasn't uh, on uh, uh, um, E Harmony or any of that junk. He was simply asleep when God had brought Eve unto Adam. Because Adam was all about what God would have him to do, he was busy. Just as Jesus told uh, his parents uh, when he was roughly 12 years old, he said, I must be about my father's business. That's what Adam was about. He was about his father's business. He was just simply tending the garden. He was taking care of the things that God had given him. He was being responsible and he was being a, a good steward of what God had put him in charge of. And it wasn't a weekly occurrence, it was a daily occurrence, and I need you to grasp that this morning. 
that I would say daily they strolled through the garden and would look at all the great things that was there. Now if you flip to the New Testament with me and you begin looking at any other of the writings in which the apostles was teaching, uh, that, that, uh, the, the pastoral epistles, all those things, it can still go back to the way it was with God and Adam because as they walked through the garden, that is exactly what we are instructed to do. In Colossians 1.10, a lot of that up above it, but for sake of time, won't read it. Uh, as Colossians 1.10, the Bible simply says this, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Walk and be fruitful. You can't do that once a week. You can't do that once a week because once a week, if that's all you're dedicated to God, I promise you, you're going to get overgrown with weeds. You're going to get overgrown with trash all up in, you, uh, up in your garden, up in your rows, and you're not ever going to get the amount of fruits that you could. I'm not saying you're not going to uh, dig through the weeds and find you a, a, a cucumber here and there, but I'm telling you, if you keep it nice, if you keep it clean, if, you, if it's well-groomed, you're going to have a heap more. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? You guys can grasp that. Being a child of God is not a Sunday morning event. Let us stand together this morning. I'm done.